All right, what's going on, everybody? Now, welcome to my next episode of my Drumming 101 series. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tlaloin Ramirez, and I make uh, videos pertaining to drumming. So if that's something of your interest or you just want to be a, a really good human being, then go ahead and um, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. So in the last episode, I covered the concept of music theory and got more in depth on how to create certain rhythms. However, there are a few of you guys who asked questions on how to play um, a five lit over three eighth notes, which is something that I didn't go over in the last video. I'm not exactly sure if this specific rhythm has a certain name. I'm pretty sure five lits over three eighth notes. Oh, I think it's called, I think it's five over three um, is the, the correct term for it. And uh, basically what you do is just, you play five notes within the space of three eighth notes. Um, it's kind of hard to find a certain downbeat or checkpoint, which is why it's complicated to to learn or to teach But um, this is how you play it in relative to a metronome Now if this kind of stuff interests you and you haven't seen the beginning of the series go ahead and click right there That'll take you to the beginning of the series and ultimately lead you to this video so now that I have gone over a few of your questions of, of the last video and kind of retouched what the last video was about, um, I'm going to be talking about the introduction of this video, which is going to be talking about technique. Now I want to remind you guys that this um, topic is very subjective. So, um, so ideas, philosophies, and a bunch of different interpretation of what technique is can vary between instructors. So it's just a heads up. Everything that I tell you guys, everything that I teach you guys is just an opinion and it's just the way I have learned through my experience of drumline. All right, so I want to introduce this topic by having you guys imagine giving a pair of sticks to a child or a toddler. Would they hold it like this? Uh, probably not. Would they hold it like this? Probably not either. The most common way that any child or any toddler or any newbie that wants to get into drumming is probably gonna hold his sticks like this. Having a child or a newbie or someone um, or a toddler pick up a brand new pair of sticks is a perfect segue on how to start talking about technique. Now to be quite frank, everyone has their own personal technique. If you just pick up a pair of sticks and you start drumming, no matter how it sounds or whatever rhythms you might be playing, you're still technically good enough to be considered a drummer because you have your own technique, your own way of playing, and that is basically good enough to be considered a drummer. However, going on with this plan is probably not the best Thing to do especially if you want to make a specific group all right so how do you prepare for an audition like this well you have to think about all the different th components that come into play when playing a stick the first and biggest mechanic that you are able to use to move a stick is obviously your arm you can use your arm to go up and down which causes a stick to go up and down and play a drum the next component is your wrist Use your wrist to go up and down, which causes the stick to go up and down, which in turn helps you play. The last and final big component that helps you play drums is your fingers. You can use fingers to move the stick up and down, which in turn helps you play music. <coughs> so your arm, your wrist, and your fingers are the three biggest adjustments that you can do to start off um, to help yourself change your technique look like the group or people that you want to look like and adjusting your technique and your style to look like other people or look like a specific group that you want to audition for is a perfect segue and perfect um, plan that you want to take in order to audition and hopefully make the groups that you want to audition for so the next thing that I want to talk about pertaining to technique is your fulcrum now, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below if I incorrectly define what a fulcrum is, but from my interpretation and for, from what I have been learned is that the fulcrum is the point at which your stick turns. So in this case, the fulcrum will be right here because it's the turning point relative to the stick of where the stick is turning. Now, what I have been first taught the fulcrum is and what I believe a lot of um, instructors teach to uh, younger kids 
uh, because it's simple, it gets the job done, and, and you can execute enough things at the lower level with the fulcrum that they teach you. And the way that they do it is you take your index and your thumb finger, you make a cross basically, you put a stick in between, and there you go. That's your fulcrum. It's one single point. Now when it comes to a higher level and more intricate way of thinking, you kind of adjust your fulcrum um, into different parts of your hands. So personally, I like to have my fulcrum, fulcrum in between like the three fingers, middle thumb and index. Is It gives me more control over the stick, which in turn um, helps me play more intricate and more complicated things, either faster or better or whatever the case may be. So, um, like I said, this topic is subjective. So if you need help with what your fulcrum is, go ahead and ask your peers around you or your instructors, or just go out and audition and learn something new about a fulcrum. And, and there, there are many, there are plenty of instructors out there that will help you guys learn exactly what they want what they expect, and how to achieve it. So let's take a step back and talk about the way you hold your sticks once again. Since we talked about the different idea on how your fulcrum works and different pressure points between all your hands, any little adjustment that you do to one hand, ideally you have to match it with your other hand. And this goes on for any new thing that you do, whatever you learn on this hand, you match it on this hand, which is why that this grip in particular is called match grip. Now, other different types of grips consist of what we call traditional grip. Now, this is the one where the snares kind of hold it a little funky, and this comes from like back in the day, I believe, the drummers in when whenever two people would have war or combat, the drummers in the sidelines would hold it like this, and and they just traditionally kept it the same way for a while. But yeah, this is called traditional grip. Um, this. This grip in particular is very complicated to explain because like I said, everyone has their own interpretations. So instead of me telling you how to do it or how the right way is, I suggest you to just go out, look at groups, learn from different people and have them teach you what they want for their groups so that it can be easier for you to make their groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign off this video by saying that I haven't really taught you guys all that much. I have strictly just told you guys the different components and labeled different parts of your body mechanics to help you learn how to control your own body, which which will help you out go and make quick and easy adjustments out there when you audition uh, and be light years ahead of anybody else who is auditioning alongside of you. So I really just intended this video to be an informational video of how your body works and different labels and mechanics throughout your arm and hands to help you go out and take the information from other people and apply it better. So just to review, this is your arm that goes up and down, your wrist and your fingers are the three main components and different levels that you can use throughout your playing style that helps you look like a different group. And the fulcrum, which is the point of rotation of where your stick goes, is, can be changed all throughout your hand, making sure that, once again, you want to look like the people around you or look like the style of the group you want to audition for, which will in turn help you guys make that specific group. So that's gonna conclude everything for today, you guys. I hope you guys liked this video, which if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Um, if you guys have any questions about something that I didn't go over in this video, go ahead and comment below so I can um, answer your guys' question in the next video. Or if you guys have just completely uh, a, a brand new topic that you want me to talk about within this series, go ahead and also leave a comment below. I'll check them out, I read all the comments. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to stick around for the next video, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that. And yeah, that's going to be everything for today, you guys. I will see you guys for the next one and peace out.